Howard's End from 1992, directed by James Ivory, starring Anthony Hopkins, Emma Thompson, Vanessa Redgrave, uh, Helena Bonham Carter, Carter. Quick log line, a businessman thwarts his wife's bequest of an estate to another woman. Not how I would describe this movie, but sure. <laughs> but this yeah, very movie, odd log line there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, this movie is on my list because this movie symbolizes my and my mom's shared love of British countryside and culture. Like that's how we even got to this movie. Like we love British series and such that we've talked about on this podcast before, whether it's, you know, the comedy shows, but also Jane Austen, all of that. I feel like I owe my appreciation to that through my mom. And I think this movie is kind of at the top of the peak of that love. But I think as I watched this movie over and over again, you know, with her, but also on my own, I think it started to have a much deeper resonance and significance for me, especially as I view my mom, several themes. So the importance of home and a house. Uh, I don't think I've shared this on the podcast before, or maybe I have, but I grew up as an army brat. So we moved a lot. We didn't really have a home that we grew up in, but mm -hmm. there was one house in, in a city in India called Hyderabad, where we were there for quite a bit. And at that time we had this, 200 year old British bungalow that we lived in that had fruit orchards and tennis courts and such wow. all in this compound. It was this kind of long home horizontal. So instead of kind of the railway style homes in San Francisco, mm -hmm. this was the opposite. Oh. So room after room after room. Um, and I don't know, there's something about that place where we were in our lives. I think I was in grade three, third, three or four or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, we moved there. And so I don't know, whenever I think about this movie, I always think about that home and coming back to it and our attachment because we grew up there, the, the grounds playing around. And, you know, I think I was old enough to appreciate what this place meant to me and, and also kind of, you know, forming a, a deeper bond with my mom playing games playing badminton and all sorts of things helping her out in the kitchen like so much mm -hmm. of our common interest started to take shape in this in this home so mm. that's one big sort of theme the other theme is just emma thompson's character who mm. is not a mother in the movie but i think she is a bit of a mother figure to her siblings and it's it's a character, but also Emma Thompson's amazing Oscar winning performance mm -hmm. where she's striking this balance between gentle strength, but making people happy all around her, but at the same time, standing up for herself, holding her own people accountable, like Helena Bottom Carter, who's just going, who's spinning out of control, but also championing them. Uh, knowing what she needs for herself and her family, because we're talking about times where women didn't have that much agency, but at mm -hmm. the same time, she is standing true to herself and not, you know, putting up with anything and everything that Anthony Hopkins character asks her to put up with. Um, so it's just such a delicate balanced performance, but also this, the, the balance, the character strikes. And I, I view my mom that way a lot. Like, you know, she had like a pseudo arranged marriage. Like she met her, my, my dad mm -hmm. before they got married and they, they liked each other, they fell in love and what have you. And then they got married, but they were, you know, hitched or introduced to each other through family connections. So it's sort of mm. a pseudo arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she came into this home and it's, it's been brilliant for me and my sister to watch how she kind of made this whole new family, her own family, um, and I'm sure that wasn't always easy, but I always think of my mom kind of striking all these different balances of, you know, uh, pleasing the in-laws and her mm. husband while standing up for herself, uh -huh. you know, holding us accountable, giving us shit, but at the same time championing us. So, you know, there's so much of that, but doing it with a smile, you know, doing it in a way that. I don't know, to me, feels like the most effective way of navigating all of this stuff mm. in life. And she sort of nailed that. Um, and then on a lighter note, I think this movie symbolizes a lot of the finer appreciation for finer things in life, right? Like I, I 
whether it's like good tea and snacks and sitting around in kind of beautiful living rooms and enjoying the afternoon or what have mm-hmm. you. I have so much, so many of such memories with my mom and my sister kind of just, you know, having good tea and snacks <laughs> in the afternoons. Um, so, so yeah, there's, there's all of that, um, which is why I love this movie and has so much great significance to me. Um, and then as a pure movie, I'm, I'm a big Merchant Ivory production mm-hmm. fan, but I think this is probably one of their best, if not if not the best. It's we talk about mise en scene a lot on this podcast. This is like amazing in every department. Um, it is a period piece, but to me, it feels very contemporary. It feels very mm-hmm. human and real. It doesn't feel stodgy or stuffy, which I, I feel like a lot of people, the moment they hear the the name or you know, anything to do with a movie like this, they're probably just tuned off. And I'm, I would highly encourage people to just watch it and give it a chance. Um, and then the last thing I would say is that the way the movie breathes and how it gets under your skin, like when the movie starts, you don't even know what's happening. Like mm-hmm. what is Vanessa Redgrave? Why are they coming to the city? Why are they forming this kind of weird bond between Emma Thompson and Vanessa Redgrave? What is Howard Zen? What is this house? Mm-hmm. Why are we seeing these blue flower fields? What is happening? Like it took me a, a little bit, but but by the three fourth point in the movie, the movie is made home in your heart and your mind. You're sort of with these people, and I think that is just such a brilliant way of storytelling, and not many people can pull off, and yet sort of hold your attention. So yeah, that's how it's end. Yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely glad you put this on on the list. I had not seen this movie before. I I'd seen a couple of Merchant Ivory movies. Mm. Um, not that I didn't like them, but it, you know they were good. Um, yeah. But uh, I haven't like gone back and tried to go over their whole filmography and kind of dive deep. And this I think is the the best one that I've seen. I, I really enjoyed this movie. I think um, it uh, it's interesting you say that about like the beginning sort of not really know what's going on because I was watching this movie and I was thinking this is, and this is one of the things I think that they do a very good job of because most of their films, if not all, again, I'm not super familiar with their filmography are literary adaptations, Mm -hmm. which I think is a hard thing to do to capture like what it's like to read a book in a film and not, and make it feel filmatic as well and cinematic. And I think this to me was just a incredible um, example of, not that I've read the book of Howard's End, but I felt like I was reading the book, but not in a negative way, in a way that was like, oh, this, it's just like the pacing of it. Even that, like you just described, sometimes when you're reading a book, especially like a long novel, you're kind of like lost or not connected with things in the first couple chapters. It's kind of setting the scene. And then halfway through the book, it turns into the page turner. Um, This movie was a lot like that too. Cause I'm like, okay, what's going on? There's so many characters. But then you, you know, an hour in or whatever, you're like super invested. Um, and then you really care about what's going on and you understand the world. It's like that, that pace uh, that I think is just a lot like reading a novel. And man, like the production design was oh just incredible. Like the attention to detail in every shot of every set that they were in, all the different settings, you felt like you were transported into this time and this place. Um, in a way that uh, is also sometimes hard to hard to pull mm-hmm. off, especially with literary adaptations. Uh, so that was just um, uh, very. I was very very impressed. Um, and then in terms of the themes, I think uh, you know you you hit on that around the theme of like the house being important. And you know Vanessa Redgrave's character was so um, focused on like her legacy because she's yeah. you know she's dying in in the film as she's very old. Um, and the house to her like represented that legacy and what a house and a physical um, embodiment of like a family's history in the past, but then also like making sure that if you keep that house in the family or make sure that a house still stands and is still there, that that's somehow your legacy after you pass on just which is something, you know, that mothers and just people too are very concerned about and how they're um, you know, their legacy through their kids or how they're, you're, you're teaching all the lessons that you learned as, as a woman to your children so that they can kind of carry on those values and those things. Mm-hmm. And I think that was definitely a very uh, important theme that, that I took away from, from this film that I think fits in a lot with what you were describing too, just with your, um, your mom and your family living in the house where like the memories are so attached to a place. Um, and that was very important to you. And I think that is something that comes through in this film uh, very clearly, and which is a very, uh, you know, just interesting uh, kind of take on, again, someone, a legacy and what you're leaving behind and how embodying, uh, you know, houses can play an important part of that. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I really, 
I really enjoyed this movie a lot. I'm definitely glad I saw it uh, and recommend, you know, folks like you were saying, Karan, if people think, uh, oh, it's maybe a little stodgy or, or stayed or something. No, this movie I thought was really like full of life um, from, from the beginning um, and, and just fantastic. Anthony Hopkins is really good in it too. Mm -hmm. I think he does a very good job of playing kind of like not such a great character, um, but uh but with so much complexity and layers. totally oh yeah, yeah. no 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 i, I mean like great character to... in terms of, like the guy's not a good guy i didn't mean in yeah. terms of, the character's rich yeah but the, so the person is yeah. not like he's you know he's uh kind of strict and traditionalist and uh judgmental and all these things but yeah he does bring a, a dimensionality to that that performance and just uh yeah just really really enjoy the film i'm so glad you did in fact when you were talking about the legacy of the home it just made me think of another thing which is that even the Vanessa Redgrave is the one that has the beautiful home. I don't think she's had a very happy life. Right. Versus right. these people who relatively Emma Thompson's and her, and her siblings, they don't come from that much money. Mm -mm. They're about to lose their home. They don't have much, but they seem so happy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the part that I always think of. And maybe I didn't do a great job talking about it earlier, but those scenes of all of them, enjoying each other, the teas and the snacks and such. I think the, the, the meta commentary being made in the movie also is that, yeah, legacy and physical things do matter, but ultimately what matters more is the, the relationship and the love that you have. So mm -hmm. even though these people don't have a whole lot, they are the true family and hence the difference between a home and a house. Right, right. Howard's End is not a home earlier. It's just a house. Mm -hmm. And it's much later when, through all these weird trials and tribulations when it finally comes back to emma thompson i think mm -hmm. that's when it probably becomes home again mm -hmm. but the point is that you don't need a house to make a home right and i connect with that because yeah we lived in this beautiful bung british bungalow but that was only for two and a half years after mm. that we were moving up and down we didn't right. even have you know a constant home to call it home right. but it didn't matter because the four of us were together and we had our teas and cakes and snacks and had a good time and supported each other. So ultimately that's what matters more. Mm, yeah, totally. Yeah. I think that movie definitely, or this movie captures that for sure. Yeah. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.